Hello! Hey everybody, this is Mr. Philippek, and I thought I'd make this quick little video podcast to try to help you out to figure out what it is we need to do to prepare for our really big biochem lab that we're going to start on Thursday. Well, the first thing we want to make sure we do is that we've all downloaded this biochem lab packet 2013 from Schoology. And make sure we suck that right into Notability uh, so we can ink on it and do everything else like that. So as we scroll down here, uh, the lab we're going to start on Thursday is this Identifying Organic Molecules Lab. And what we're going to be doing is taking a look at indicators. And just like I highlighted here, an indicator is any substance that's going to change color in the presence of something, uh, a particular compound. Okay, whether it be a sugar, a protein, a fat, uh, maybe a simple sugar versus a complex sugar versus a, a disaccharide. And there are four indicators that we're going to use. Now, your lab protocol here talks about a solubility test. And we're not really going to do that. We're going to run a brown paper test on lipids. And I'll kind of explain uh, why in a little bit later. The second indicator we're going to use is iodine. And iodine is going to cause starch. And if you remember what starch is, it's that polysaccharide that we find in potatoes, um, breads, pasta. It's going to turn iodine, which is normally yellow in color, to kind of a blue-black. And it's pretty obvious when we have a starch. The third indicator we're going to use is something called Benedict solution. And it's going to turn a certain type of sugar, whether that be a mono, it could be a dye, or it could be a polysaccharide. It's going to change Benedict solution from a blue, after we heat it for a couple of minutes, to either a green, an orange, or a yellow. So basically, a positive reaction with Benedict is any color change from blue. Well, the final indicator we're going to use is something called biuret. And it tests for the presence of proteins. And what it's going to do is change this kind of a bluish color that is really pretty violet if there's a protein involved. And so what we want you to do now is to go through and kind of answer these questions like what is an indicator? Why are we going to use them in this experiment? And why in the world are we going to want to test distilled water with all these indicators before we ever uh, run anything with any of the compounds? Well, hopefully you guess that the, the idea here is that distilled water is going to be that's right, our control group. And we're all great biogeniuses, and we always want to use a control group. Well, anyway, your goal for today is to read the procedure of the lab and then create, in notability, kind of visualization of what the lab setup is going to look like. So if I were to delete this biochem lab packet from not only Schoology, but somehow through the mystery of Apple, delete it all from every one of your notabilities, you would still be able to do the lab based on this creation or this pre-lab. There's a couple of reasons why we want to do this. One is to make sure that, one, we've read through the lab. And the second one, is, which is even more important, that you are prepared to do the lab and to do the lab safely. Remember, I said if you heat the wrong indicator, we're going to create an odorless, very toxic gas that's going to cause a lot of bad things in our class. And we have a great track record so far. Well, let's keep that up. And so you can see the first procedure is, is we're going to have some boiling water going. And that's going to be for our Benedict's test. And now, you know, the first thing here with lipids, it says copy table one on to brown paper. So we kind of scroll down here and this is going to be table one. All right, and then it says to take some of the, the substances and rub each food sample in a, in a particular area and let it sit for 15 minutes. And that's because fats, well, let's think about this. How many of you have ever ordered French fries from a restaurant? Let me see your hands. <laughs> right. And maybe when you've gotten, and I kind of have a picture here, you get home and the bag kind of looks like this. And the french fries are in there, and all of a sudden the bag looks like it's got you know, speckles. And you wonder to yourself, well, why is the bag uh, all wet? Well, you guessed it. It's due to the grease. Okay, I mean, look at that. That looks pretty good, right? 
And this is what makes fries taste awesome because it's full of fat. I mean, wow, if you take a look at some of these other pictures, these look pretty good too. But anyway, sometimes if you let this bag sit long enough with greasy fries, sometimes that spot becomes what we call translucent, where we can actually see through it. And that's actually going to be a positive test for lipids. So we need to let this test sit for 15 minutes because if there isn't a fat, what's going to happen is, is that the spot's going to dry normal and we won't be able to see through the brown paper. For this carbohydrate procedure, I want you to call it the iodine test. And you can see here, we're going to start off with 3 mils of a food substance, add 3 drops of iodine, gently shake the tube, and we're going to do it by swirling the tube, and then notice any change in the color. And if you remember, iodine starts as yellow, and in the presence of starch, because that's what it tests for, it's going to turn a blue-black. And this next little part just talks about why, what we're going to do after 15 minutes. For this sugar experiment, I want you to call it the Benedict's test. And again, you see we start with 3 mils of a food substance. So you can see we're practicing great controlled experiments. After we add 3 drops of Benedict's solution, Benedict's solution requires heat for a reaction to, to take place. And so we're going to place those test tubes in hot water for about three minutes. And then we're going to use test tube holders to remove those tubes so we don't burn ourselves. And then mark any kind of color changes in our test tube in our data table. Well, the final test we're going to run is the test for the presence of proteins. And if you remember from earlier, we said we're going to use Biuret reagent. And again, we start with three mils of each food substance, add three drops of Biuret, and then just mark any color changes. You notice that the only thing we're going to heat is Benedict's solution. All right, we're not going to heat iodine. That would be really bad. And we're not going to heat Biuret. We certainly don't have to heat brown paper. Okay. So you might be wondering right now, well, what would a really good pre-lab look like? Well, fear not. I have a great example of one. This was done by a student a couple of years ago, and I just kind of kept it, and I thought I'd snap a pic of it to kind of help you out. You can see right here, this is the Benedict's test. They can show they show you the water bath. They show you, fill it halfway with water. You can tell right now we want to get it up to boil. And then you can see in, in this lab protocol, we set up three test tubes. You can see that they marked how many drops, in this case a monosaccharide solution in test tube one. In test tube 2, they want to put 10 drops of a disaccharide. Test tube 3, they want to put 10 drops of a polysaccharide. And then they said to add 2 drops of Benedict's solution in each of the test tubes. So right now you can kind of visualize exactly what this lab is going to look like. The third step, as you see down here, says to leave it in this hot water bath for 5 minutes. And then the last step is to remove the test tubes from the water. And if you notice, they even included the picture of the tongs. And then it says to observe the color changes. I can easily, if I kind of zoom out here a little bit, I can easily complete this lab without ever looking at my lab packet. And what this shows me is that a student who has thought through the lab procedure and has a great idea of what we're going to do. On the flip side of this, they did the iodine test. And again, they set up the same three test tubes. Again, you notice we put the, the proper volumes of liquid. I think for ours, we're putting three mils Okay, so instead of 10 drops, we'll put 3 mils of whatever food substance it is. And we're going to test a monosaccharide, a disaccharide, a polysaccharide. We're also going to test something that we know has protein in it. And we're also going to test something that has a lipid. So we probably want to put 5 test tubes, and I'll kind of show you why. You can see in the second step of the iodine test that they're going to add 2 drops of iodine with a dropper. And then the mix by swirling, and then just record the color change. Now this student went above and beyond and began to even look ahead at the chemical test for unknowns. All right, and began to see this idea that you know they had to set up a lot more test tubes, and in our case, it's going to be ten uh, test tubes of unknown substances. Uh, but all the the protocol is in the lab. So if I click back to the lab, right, you can see here that the knowns here we're going to have five substances here. And in this box here, I'd love for you to write monosaccharide. In box two, we're going to write disaccharide. Box three, polysaccharide. Box four, protein. And in box five, lipid or fat. 
And then we're going to run all these tests. Now, I know somebody out there saying, hey, Philippe, I'm no dum-dum. I know in box five, if I put a lipid, well, a lipid test is going to test positive. Well, duh, we know that. But the idea is, is that we got to compare, well, does the brown paper test work with any of the other substances? Because we're going to use this chart, which is going to kind of be our, our go-to chart to compare on Friday when we start testing things that we have no idea what's in them. Okay, and we're going to use these indicators to figure out uh, which organic molecules exist in each of those unknown substances. All right, so again, we want to make sure we write a really good pre-lab here. And before anybody can do this lab on Thursday, I need to see all of your pre-labs. Okay, so we see the one here for the iodine test. We see the Benedict's test. All right, because if you don't, she's going to be not really happy. That's Piper, and she's going to give you a sad face. All right. Well, anyway, I hope this podcast helped you out and helps you to get to understand what you need to do today. And as always, thanks for listening.